So, we were talking about some of the actual symbolic truths in the Bible, ones that actually exist in the Bible. Metaphorical truths, if you will. We were talking, we were relating it to the book of Exodus. What happens in the book of Exodus? They set out for the promised land. What is that, what is that talking about, symbolically speaking, metaphorically speaking? The land of God's promise. So let us say you and I, let's take it to the real world. Let us say you and I are building a company together. And we are going to sell gizmos and gadgets to idiots. Yeah, that's our company. We're going to sell gizmos and gadgets to imbeciles. And we're going to make millions upon millions of dollars. And we're to call it Craig's Elaborate Scam. That's what we're going to call our company. And the promised land is one day we're going to be billionaires. We're going to go global with this thing. We're going to be billionaires. We're going to have it, you know, go public with it. That's the promise. God spoke that to my spirit one day. That's the promise. So now we set out for the promised land. And what's the first thing that happens? We come into a wilderness experience. What is that metaphorically speaking? A dry place. Wherein the promise is not realized. And we've got a distance to, tra to traverse before we get there. So what happens in the wilderness? We cry out to God. Oh, great God. Are we to die here in the wilderness? There's nothing to eat. There's no water. It's a dry place. I'm not yet rich. Oh, great God, send provisions. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And what happens? God sends manna in the wilderness. What is manna in the wilderness, metaphorically speaking? Just enough to get by. Just enough to get by. Now, whether an atheist or a Christian, this metaphor is easy to understand. It's the actual metaphorical truth of the book of Exodus, word of God. They set out for the promised land. In between where they are, the here and now, and the land of God's promise is a wilderness experience. And if you are actually building a company, you can put this into real world terms. The, the, before you become Steve Jobs, or jobs. You're, you're, you're going to become the next Bill Gates. That's the promise for your life. But before you actually get there, there's going to be a dry place where you find yourself with just enough to get by. And you've got to survive on just your wits. And if there is no God, you're surviving on just your instincts. And if there is a God, you better cry out to him <laughs> because you've got to get out of the wilderness and into the land of God's promise. That is the metaphorical truth undergirding the book of Exodus. This is the actual substance of the text. This is what I was talking about in some of my last videos. Metaphorical truths are the real thing that the book is talking about. When we read Crime and Punishment, we don't really care about the mechanics of the plot in relationship to Raskolnikov. What we are reading it for is the philosophical musings on the nature of Crime and Punishment. When we read the book of Exodus, there is an underlying metaphorical truth undergirding the book of Exodus. These are the type of situations that occur in between here, present tense, and there, the land of God's promise. And a wilderness experience is a perfectly brilliant metaphor. Perfectly brilliant metaphor to capture that quote-unquote dry place between you setting off for your vision and the dream realized in the here and now. In between here and success is a dry place. And navigating that emotional space, navigating that, that time where you, you know, there's going to be a time if you're building a company. Let's say you start off, you, 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 you sign on, you're going to build Craig's, what did I call it? Craig's, uh, Craig's House of Scam. That's what we're going to call it. Craig's Big Scam House. Uh, something like that. I don't know. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Craig's Elaborate Scam, that's our company, CES for short. So we're going to build this company in between today when we set off on our vision for the land of God's promise. We get together and we start writing up our flow sheets and our diagrams. There's going to be a period where we ain't really bringing home enough to bring in the bacon. That's where we sub survive on mana in the wilderness. Metaphorical truth for just enough to get by. Symbolic representation of just enough to get by. 
If you actually pay attention to how your life has worked over these years, if you aren't where in Christianity they say, I'm not where I used to be, I'm not where I need to be, something like that, I don't remember exactly how it goes, not where I need to be, I'm not where I used to be, you know, Jesus, uh, take the wheel, something like that. What's the metaphorical truth? God has given you just enough to get by. Pay attention to how your life has actually worked. Are you alive listening to me now? Yeah, you got just enough to get by. That's man in the wilderness, metaphorically speaking. Symbolic representation of, yeah, it's not, not exactly, you know, not exactly Bill Gates. I don't have two Ferraris yet. Three, four, trade one, sell one, whatever. But I have just enough to get by. So, that is the symbolic representation of the book of Exodus. And this is the actual book of Exodus. This is what it really represents. The metaphorical truth that Peterson talks about in the Bible, if you listen to Peterson's analysis of the psychological realities of undergirding the scriptures, he is telling the truth. The things that he say the, the, the characters represent symbolically, oftentimes he's 100% correct. I'll do another thing on the, uh, you know, if you listen, go listen to his Adam and Eve. It's correct. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a psychological, philosophical analysis of why the story of Adam and Eve has resonated through the centuries. It's not a discussion of whether this is a literal truth or not. But in a way, the stuff he is talking about in his take on the book of Adam and Eve is more important. It's a lot more important. You read in the book of Exodus, the metaphorical undergirding of the story, the philosophical underpinning of the story, is actually a lot more important, even in terms of your spiritual walk, than whether it literally occurred or not. So, that's all for now on the subject. Amen.